When the AV Club travels, we always make time to visit pop culture landmarks. If something memorable happened in the world of film, TV, books, or music, we want to go there. We're not just tourists, we're pop pilgrims. This week on Pop Pilgrims, we're headed to Memphis, birthplace of pro wrestler Viscera, the world's largest love machine, and the source of a staggering amount of American culture. I'm your host, Dan Telfer, and I'm here in the car with crew members Brendan and Jamie on the way to Ardent Studios. Ardent Studios was where many classic albums were recorded by artists like R.E.M., ZZ Top, Isaac Hayes, and Big Star. Well, Dan, we're here in the lobby at our studios, and I'm John Fry, I'm the founder. Uh, we always say we started out in 1966, which was when we got a real commercial studio building, but I really started out sooner than that. I started out as a teenager recording in my home, and I had a home studio before uh, anybody knew what a home studio was. You know, the Stax portrait of, of the Stax Marquis as a place of honor in our lobby because there were a lot of connections with Stax. When we opened up in 66, Stax started sending us all their overflow work and we did all of that uh, uh, from 66 until Stax closed in 75. But all of these records that are here displayed are things that, uh, most of which we recorded in their entirety. Some of them are things that we only partially did and, and there's certainly a great variety of things that we've done. We've kept a lot of things and among the things we've kept are a lot of our vintage musical instruments. For example, here's our Hammond uh, organ and then this is kind of an interesting piece of equipment that we bought in the late 60s. It's a Mellotron and this was used on uh, many records including the Big Star records. What was it like when you first got to work here creatively? It was just uh, a little magic wonderland. I, you know, you sit in the studio and you bang around on drums and you pick around on guitars and, and you twist a few knobs and all of a sudden you have these great melodies and, and pretty cool songs. Uh, what was uh, it like to record the third album? That was, uh, that was an, a, a, again, a, a completely different adventure because we'd gone from a four-piece to a three-piece and now we're a two-piece and we have uh, some session players sitting with us. And we also had a producer in Jim Dickinson uh, so we could look for, to Jim for guidance in addition to uh, John Fry who, was, who had engineered all these sessions and was, you know, the, the brilliant man behind the uh, just incredible sonics of those records. Working with the guys in Big Star was uh, a, a special privilege uh, for me. If anybody asked me what were my favorite records that I worked on, you know, I think they always expect me to say, well, they were the, would be the ones that sold the most or they were the, you know, the very most successful on the charts or something like that. But I would have to say that they were the Big Star records because they were close to my heart musically, but because of the people in the band were such good friends too. It's hard for me to believe that 75% of the original members are now deceased. The first day I started, January of 1987, here on the business side of things, Jim Dickinson was in our Studio B recording with the replacements. And what was to be the replacements pleased to meet me. Which was a kind of an interesting session. They're kind of tied, I think, in my memory, uh, for drunkest bands uh, with uh, with Primal Scream. I, I, I don't know who gets the uh, ultimate uh, <laughs> prize on that, but uh, they're running neck and neck in my memory. Uh, they were perfectly nice. I mean, uh, you know, the amount of uh, drinking didn't seem to interfere with the recording process at all. I mean, it was a good album and it sold well, and, and, uh, and they even stuck a song on it called Alex Chilton. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, the dots all seem to connect somehow. What do you think it is that uh, continues to draw artists here? Well, I think John Fry said it best, and, and that good things can happen here. And, uh, you know, they can indeed. I've had, you know, obviously great experiences here myself. I mean, it's a great studio, and it's a great vibe. and. You have to feel comfortable where you're working to some extent. You know, I've been coming to work at the same job for 45 years and uh, I haven't lost interest in it or uh, and I'm not interested in quitting as long as I'm healthy enough and I think I can be effective, I want to keep on doing it. Mm -hmm. 